This encounter happened to me over the summer. I was taking a walk, talking to my mum on the phone after finishing my shift at work. It was around 8pm and I was in an area that had a soccer field next to some new condos. On the other side of the field there were some disused factory buildings which were hidden by a bunch of trees and then behind that were a number of walking trails through a more heavily wooded area. There is a freeway on both sides of the area which is separated by a grassy embankment. Drivers on the freeway can't really see much other than parts of the soccer field and the top of the factory. While I was talking to my mum, I was wandering about and ended up over in the factory grounds. When I'm on the phone, I get easily distracted, so I wasn't really paying much attention to my whereabouts. The factory was previously a bottling plant, but it had been converted into apartments before eventually being boarded up. There were some people around the area. It gives easy access to the woods and they're a popular place to exercise. It was light outside, so I wasn't really thinking twice about wandering around near the building. I figured I'd take a long walk to get my steps up and to close my exercise ring. I was using headphones to talk to my mum. I had one headphone in and my mum was telling me a pretty long story about something funny that happened so I wasn't really talking, just listening and looking up at the boarded windows and graffiti on the building. I was around the back of the building. It didn't feel overly secluded because the walking path is about 15 feet away. The bushes between the factory and the path are too thick to walk through, but you can still see people between the trees and the bushes on the other side going about their business. I was about to take a photo of one of the graffiti walls. I thought it would be a good subject for my art project. I looked up and realised there was a man standing about 8 feet away from me, just staring at me. I froze. I didn't hear him approach or see him in the park before. I wasn't really listening for anyone, but the ground around the building was overgrown covered in gravel and dead leaves, so it was strange that I didn't hear any movement. He must have been trying to conceal his presence, or perhaps he came out of the building. We looked at each other for a few seconds. My mum was still telling her story. This kind of thing happened to me before. I like exploring old buildings, and there are some squatters, so sometimes I run into them but it's usually just awkward. I apologise and say I was just taking a photo. They either tell me to have a nice day or to shove off. I leave. They go back to the building. They usually don't really stare at me. I was about to apologise and he started walking towards me. I panicked and ran out of the area. My mum was still telling the story and had no idea what was going on. I was trying to convince myself there was no immediate risk and I didn't want to worry her but I started walking to the freeway just to play it safe. I was thinking he would either turn around and go back to the building or maybe go to the car that I just noticed was parked nearby. Maybe he was a caretaker for the property and he was just annoyed with me trespassing. It was really unclear why he was there and what he wanted. I got a good look at him, but there wasn't really a lot that stood out other than his creepy gaze. Either way, I did not expect him to follow me, so I started walking faster and finally told my mum what was going on. Of course, as this was happening, all the joggers and cyclists that were around were gone. It was just me and my mum, who lived ten hours away, listening helplessly. I kept turning around to check and the man was still following me, staying about 10 feet away but walking with intent, looking right at me. 
I told my mum what he and the car looked like, just in case. I made it to the freeway and climbed up the embankment to walk along the busy road. When I finally got up to where the drivers could see me, I looked down and saw the man had turned around. He was now walking quickly in the opposite direction. I got out of there before I saw which direction he went. The creepiest thing to me is that the path I took to the freeway is a lesser used walking path that leads into the woods. It doesn't go anywhere except down to a small river in the woods, so it doesn't get much traffic. Until I veered off at the last minute to go up the embankment, it probably looked like I was going into the woods. I haven't been there alone since. I was a process server, and I have a lot of interesting stories from my job. I have a couple of encounters that really scared me. This experience helped confirm that I should always trust my gut. I went into an apartment building to serve someone who lived there. When I was walking up to the building, there was an older man sitting at the bench, right by the front door to the complex. He had a cane next to him. He was friendly and said hello. I said hello back and let my guard down, so I started to have small talk with him. I attempted to open the front door, but it ended up being locked. I explained to the man that I'm a process server, so I was attempting to give some papers to someone that lived in the building. He started to talk about how he has a daughter my age and that he wouldn't be comfortable with her being a process server because it wasn't a safe job. He also said it must be unsafe for me because I'm small. I'm five foot three and at the time I was around 105 pounds. I started to feel like something was off I also thought maybe I was being a bit overdramatic because this is just an older man who has to use the cane. I felt like it was almost rude to be cautious of someone like that. I still had a job to do and I wasn't going to let this deter me, so I asked the man if he was willing to let me into the apartment building. He said he would. It seemed to take him some effort to stand up and walk towards the door with his cane so I started to feel I had been overreacting. The man opened the door for me and I walked into the building. I was about to go up the stairs, but the man insisted I take the elevator. I started to feel uneasy, but for some reason I agreed to take the elevator. I thought the man would leave me alone if I took his suggestion. I started to walk over to the elevator and he followed me. He continued to talk to me. He asked me about my job and my life. When I got to the elevator, the man also got into the elevator. At this point, I froze because I didn't understand why he had followed me. The man was standing closer to the back wall of the elevator and I was standing closer to the door. I didn't want to make eye contact with him in that enclosed space but I was watching him in the reflection of the shiny metal elevator door. I asked him why he got into the elevator with me and he said he was watching out for me. When the man said this, I could clearly see that his head was facing me and it moved down starting at the floor where my feet were and moved up slowly like he was looking at me from bottom to top. I started to feel claustrophobic and I needed to get off that elevator now. The elevator door opened and I practically jumped out. I told the man that he needed to stay there because I wanted to respect the privacy of the person I was serving papers to. I then told the man to have a nice day. I thought that would be the easiest way to break the conversation. The man just nodded at me. I get off the elevator and begin to walk down the hallway, looking for the right apartment number that is listed on the documents. I continue walking, and I feel like I'm being watched, but I don't turn around. I had to walk around the corner and further down the hallway. The feeling of being watched goes away, and I know it's because there is now a wall between me 
and whoever was looking at me. I get to the right apartment and knock on the door. There is no answer. I knock again, a few more times, much louder. Then I wait about 30 seconds and give the door four solid knocks before waiting patiently. I couldn't hear any signs of life inside the apartment. No TV, no pets, no movement. I accepted defeat. I'm a little annoyed that I went through all of this just to arrive at this person's apartment, but they aren't even home. I started to walk back the way I came. I turned around the corner of the hallway and the man is standing there. I get a sinking feeling in my stomach. He stands there, one hand on his cane, hovering in front of the elevator. I keep walking while a bunch of different thoughts are running through my head. The man asked how it went. He said he had been waiting for me and pressed the button to open the elevator doors. I knew that I shouldn't go on the elevator with this man again. I started a fast walk past him towards the stairs. Once I reached the stairs, I started running down them. I got down one set of stairs and I heard a voice shout wait. I looked up and I could see the man on top of the staircase carrying his cane as he began to run down the stairs after me. He wasn't using his cane at all to descend down the stairs and he was moving way faster than he had previously. I turned away and ran as fast as I could down the stairs without falling. I started to jump down two stairs at a time. I knew that he was close behind me because I could hear his loud feet as he was running down behind me. I reached the bottom of the stairs and narrowly missed bumping into another resident of the building. I apologised and then felt panic when I realised the man was probably right behind me. I looked behind me and the man was using his cane again to get down the last few steps. I looked back at the other building resident and they had a puzzled look on their face. I mumbled, have a nice day and fled out of the apartment building straight into my car. I didn't look back to see if the man was following me, but something in my gut told me that the other resident being present had helped me. When I reached my car, I practically jumped into it, slammed the door and hit the lock right away. I started my car and pulled out of the car park quickly. The exit required me to drive past the front door of the apartment building. I looked over to see if there was any sign of that man and there he was. He had stepped outside the front door and was standing there, leaning on his cane and smiling at me driving by. He then gave me a slow wave. I don't know why, but I gave him a brief smile. I still felt like I had to be nice, even though something obviously really messed up was about to happen. But at least I was in my car, driving away, and he had no way to catch up to me.